In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Shalom dear friends, welcome to In the Last Days program. Today we, we have again Eliezer Ben Yehuda, which is wonderful. We've done already some Hebrew um, teaching with him. And we know how it is important to go into the Torah, into the Word of God in Hebrew. So welcome again. Thank you. you. It's a pleasure to be Hello. with you. It's wonderful. I want to remind you that Eliezer Ben Yehuda is the grandson of the Eliezer Ben Yehuda. And there is books written about his granddad. This book is the Tongue of the Prophet and is the story of Israel and of Eliezer Ben Yehuda. And you can't put this book down. There is like up and down, he almost died, love stories in the middle, and the story of the revival of the Hebrew language. There is also this book, and this was written by Eliezer Ben Yehuda, the grandson of the Eliezer Ben Yehuda, and it's called Fulfillment of Prophecy and how his granddad was part of, of this fulfillment of prophecy that the Hebrew language was used again, not just to be, pr uh, to be uh, pray like they used it for prayers, they always, they always prayed in Hebrew. So they didn't lose really the language, but they weren't speaking it on the street anymore. And he was the first one in on the street of Jerusalem of speaking Hebrew, and this is just wonderful to know that. And I wrote also a book which is called The Beauty of the Hebrew Language. Again, is to introduce the people again to the Hebrew language. And you can find that on uh, our website, which is www.inthelastdays.com. And these two books, you can find them on Amazon. Try again, because I know this one, Eliezer was telling me it's harder to find. But yesterday I was going again onto the Amazon uh, website and I could see it was written there. So you can grab a book. It's an amazing book because the two, the fulfillment of prophecy, it gives the story, the inside story of the family. And the other one is more all the story also about Israel. So this is wonderful. And also, so today we are starting, you see, I start to read my Bible in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. So it's Hebrew there and English there. So slowly, slowly. And this is the book of Genesis, and we're going to speak about that. So again, yes. people, if you can, if you start to learn Hebrew, just learn also with the Torah, with the Hebrew scriptures, because it really gives you more understanding, and it goes close to your face, isn't it? It's so rich. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, one of the first things that uh, I would like to mention, we didn't even talk about that ahead of time, but you know, very often when people speak about Torah, they say, it's the Torah, that is to say, the law, mm -hmm. you see. And Torah is not law. Torah is instruction, instruction or teaching, mm -hmm. and it comes from the root of the word more, which means teacher. And lehorot, which is the infinitive form that says mm -hmm. to teach. So to teach is lehorot, and Torah is what you are learning. So it's, see, our it's book. the teaching. Yes, it's our you book see? of teaching. And you know, one of the uh, very famous uh, statement of the prophet is, "Ki mitzion tetzet Torah udvar Hashem miRushalayim," mm -hmm. for out of Zion shall come forth the teaching, not the law, mm -hmm. and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Again, the word of the law of of the Lord is not law. In the same way that you might say that uh, a child whose father gives him some instruction, mm -hmm. he's not setting down a law, mm -hmm. but he's trying to teach him how to live a good life and how he's going to be rewarded mm -hmm. for his good deeds. Very good, very and that's the whole concept good. relative to Torah. Very good. So you see, don't be afraid of the name Torah. We. I don't know why. In the Christian world, a lot of people are afraid. Say we go under the law. No, it's the instruction of the Lord. So That's it's correct. Very important. That's correct. Yeah. And it's really, uh, it's a complement mm -hmm. to the New Testament. Mm -hmm. It's not a competition mm -hmm. with the New Testament, sure. but rather a complement to the New Testament. And 
anybody who says that uh, the Old Testament, you know, of course, for Jews, it's not the Old Testament. Yeah, sure. uh, it's the only yeah. uh, teaching, mm -hmm. you see. But uh, from point of view of Christianity, the Old Testament is law and the New Testament is love. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not true. It's not true. It's no, not true. I agree, because, because I started because, to read it and uh, I can see it's not true. Where, where it talks mm -hmm. about the foundation of the faith in Judaism, mm -hmm. you know, we come to the call words of the Jewish people mm -hmm. from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Mm -hmm. And Jesus the Jew in the New Testament, when he was asked, what is the first teaching? Not what is the first commandment. Mm -hmm. You see? Right. What is yes. the first teaching? Mm -hmm. He said very naturally, very, you know... Straight out of his heart. Automatically yeah, yeah, out yeah. of his heart, yeah. exactly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He said, of course, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You see? And then, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Mm -hmm. You see? And so... This is, without the love, there is nothing, you know, including in the Hebrew Scriptures. You see. So, what we want to do is to understand mm -hmm. a little bit more about the Hebrew Scriptures. The Hebrew Scriptures are almost written in code because in the days when they were transcribed, Writing was a very difficult chore. People wrote, and they wrote with pen, you know, with a quill. But it was difficult because it was tedious, and uh, you had expensive. to prepare. Expensive also? Look, it was not a mercantile time, so expensive oh. meant nothing. Okay, yeah. Nobody had money, mm -hmm. you see. And what is, what is the meaning of expensive? If you didn't have food, you starved. So to get food was the important thing, you know. But you couldn't put a value to it at all. There was no value to it, you see. So, you know, this is... When you speak about expensive, really you're talking about modern times already. Mm -hmm. uh, in antiquity, uh, wealth was measured by how many working hands you could put into the field. Mm -hmm. How much wheat and barley and grain and uh, 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 olives and pomegranates and grapes, mm -hmm. how much of that you could bring mm -hmm. and how much of that you could preserve. Because if you had all the apples in the world, you would still starve once the apples started to rot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see? So you had to make sure that you had to preserve the, them. The, a way to preserve them, and you had a way to uh, maintain yourself by having a variety of fruits and vegetables and grain that you could use all year long. And that was something very important for the people back then. So, uh, going back to the, uh, the Hebrew Scriptures, mm -hmm. uh, they had to prepare. The first books were not written on uh, paper. Uh, they were written on parchment, on skin, you see. And uh, uh, when they were written on skin, you had to prepare the skin ahead of time mm -hmm. so that it will be preserved for a while, like a couple of hundred years or so. <laughs> so that took a, a long time to prepare and to learn how to prepare it. Mm -hmm. And then writing, you know, not everybody knew how to write. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, most people learn how to read but not necessarily to write. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that was there, and uh, once you wrote, you wrote in code. For example, uh, Hebrew writing mm -hmm. is all consonants. There are no vowels. Mm -hmm. So you write uh, BK, mm -hmm. and BK can be uh, buck, and it could be back, and it could be book. Mm -hmm. So how do you know which it is? by the context, you know, if you have a sentence and you have the BK in there and you write somebody a letter and you say, I'm reading a very BK, uh, you know, so I'm reading a very interesting BK, you know, it's a book. And if you say, I'll be BK next week, you know, you're saying I'll be back, not I'll be a book, 
you see, and so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, the Hebrew is written like that. So which means that it was condensed. The, it was very condensed, yes. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about the uh, uh, content in Hebrew is that it was also done in such a way that it had more than one meaning, on purpose. On purpose. And mm -hmm. you know that many words have more than one meaning, mm -hmm. and uh, the meaning depends, again, on the uh, context. context of the sentence. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, fast. Mm -hmm. uh, we can say somebody is very fast, mm -hmm. and it means he's very quick. Mm -hmm. you know? Or we can say, I painted my home with a fast color, which means that it was a very solid color, mm -hmm. and it dried quickly, and it's going to stay for a long time. Mm -hmm. You see, so here's fast having two different meanings mm -hmm. uh, that one is a question of speed, but the other one really isn't. And like mm -hmm. fasting or so, will you use it? That's a different fast, yes, very good. And this is something entirely different. Mm -hmm. It's a verb, mm -hmm. you to see, fast. to yeah. fast, yes, you see. So there, exactly, that's the kind of thing that you have in Hebrew too. And sometimes, you know, in English and in Hebrew, mm -hmm. you have homonyms. You have words that yeah. sound the same, but they're not written yeah. the same. And when you learn the language, it's terrible. <laughs> I remember learning English and it's like, what do you mean? Because, you know, you are, you are slower in your, in your mind. Yeah. Yes, and then, of course, you know, I remember when I was starting to learn English, you know, and I, you know, there's no rule in English, you know. No. Why is... Uh, C-O-U-G-H, why do we read that cough? You know, where does that come from? I don't know. I have trouble too. <laughs> <laughs> Should be K-O-F, yeah. cough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, in Hebrew it's much more uh, yes, simple. Yes, yes. It's yes, much yes. more simple the rule in that there is sense, yes, you know. Yeah. And, uh, of course, you know... In, Thank in you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Anyhow, so, with... Uh, this philosophizing about languages, uh, I think that we're going to come into uh, our Hebrew scripture, into the book of Genesis, mm -hmm. and we're going to start in the beginning. Mm -hmm. What can be more important and what can be yes. simpler at the same time? And we're going to start with the first word. The first word of uh, the Hebrew scriptures is the word Bereshit. Mm -hmm. Bereshit translates to in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And yet, in the Hebrew, mm -hmm. it's not Always. that simple. Mm -hmm. It's not that simple. It's so just like Bereshit, the verb... No, no, sorry. The name for the book Genesis yes. is Bereshit. In Hebrew, in ancient time, books were named based on the first important noun that was there. So, for example, or sometimes it wasn't even the noun. The third book of the scriptures, which mm -hmm. is called Leviticus in English, mm -hmm. in Hebrew it's called Vayikra. Vayikra. You see, Vayikra is, and he called. It's the book of, and he called. Mm -hmm. So, is that a telephone book? <laughs> he calls, hello, are you there? Do you hear me now? No, he called his people. <laughs> but, yes. but yeah, yeah, yeah. the point is, you see, it's not even a, a noun, it's a verb, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you see. The second book is called Names. Shemot. Shemot, right. El Shemot B'nai Israel. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the yeah. names of the children of Israel who came down to Egypt, you see. So El Shemot, these are the names. These is not a good enough uh, word to have as the name. So the second word mm -hmm. is the Shemot, you know, and it's names. So the book of names, mm -hmm. that would be a good name for a telephone book. Yes. It's but true. it's not. It's mm -hmm. the book of Exodus. You see, and the Exodus is not mentioned in the book, even though it's really the, the, the crux of the meaning of the thing. So, in Hebrew we have here the Hebrew word for in the beginning. Now, first of all, the question is, why, you know, is there only one word for in the beginning in Hebrew? And the answer is no. There is at least two. And the way of expressing it can be even a third, mm -hmm. you see. But 
the two words are Bereshit, mm -hmm. which is the word that we use actually, and Bahatchala. Bahatchala means at the start of, mm -hmm. which is in the beginning. Mm -hmm. You see, and uh, usually we say Bahatchala uh, to mean when something got started. Mm -hmm. You see, like for example, if you if you uh, start the engine mm -hmm. in your in the in the car, you know, or or anywhere when you start it, so you say Bahat Chala. In the beginning, you put the key in and you okay. you, you press the starter button. Mm -hmm. You see Bahat Chala. Here we say Bereshit, which is a different kind of beginning. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of beginning where actually the word mm -hmm. is more than one word when it's translated. In the beginning, in the beginning, is one word in Hebrew, Bereshit. Yeah, yeah. So how can one word be three words? And the answer is, you have a beginning part of the word, which is called a prefix. Mm -hmm. You have a middle part, which is the, uh, the main idea. And the end of the word is the suffix, and it connects and puts together a sentence. It joins the sentence, you see, and it gives it. It, it gives it meaning. So, the word Bereshit is made up of the prefix B, the, le first le the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet, uh, the word Resh Aleph Shin, which is Rosh, which means head, you see, and we're, we're saying it's in the beginning in the sense of at the head of things. Mm -hmm. You see, like at the head of a line, you have the first person who is in the line. Berosh. You see? Berosh. Berosh, yes, exactly. Um, and then the it ending of after the word Rosh, you see, means of, in the beginning of. Mm -hmm. You see? In the beginning of in what? The beginning of. In the beginning of creation, in the beginning of the thing, and you know, etc., 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 whatever mm -hmm. comes there. Mm -hmm. So we use the word Bereshit rather than Bahatchala for a particular purpose, because it teaches us what it means to be in the beginning in the sense of the creation of the world. So every letter... Every letter counts. Yeah. Every letter counts, exactly. And uh, we will begin by looking at this word, and let me tell you that our sages I mean, this is not something that is new from Eliezer ben Yehuda, mm -hmm. but rather something that has been taught in Judaism for a very, very long time. And they said, what does it mean in the beginning? Where does beginning This is begin? what I love. It's like they do inquiry. They inquiry. Yes, they inquire into the meaning inquire. of the text. And they always ask not only what is the word and what is the message, but why was that word used? Mm -hmm. And so, in the beginning, why did we use that word, Bereshit? And they said, good, let's ask a better question. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to begin? And I gave you an example. Suppose you want to build a home. Mm -hmm. How do you start to build a home? Some people will say, you get the bricks and you start putting up the bricks to and make the foundation. The, ah, but you have to have a foundation. So maybe you start by digging a foundation. But that's not a good place to start either because you can have a foundation that is totally linear and you're going to have a nice wall, but you're not going to have a house. Mm -hmm. In order to have a house, you have to have a plan. You have to have a square or you have to have two rectangles, one big and one small. You have to decide ahead of time, is it going to be two stories or one story? Do you, you have, have enough think. room, you know? So what do you have to do? You have to think, exactly. You have to think and you have to plan. Mm -hmm. So where does beginning start? It starts in the Rosh. In the rosh you see, it starts the in the head. Mm -hmm. And so the use of the word Bereshit is because we wanted to make sure that everybody understands that we're talking about something which is not haphazard. Mm -hmm. It's not like a big wind came and there was a big bang yeah. and all of a sudden, poof, there's a world. Wow, look at that. You know, there's this whole world just yeah. by strange accident. 
And when you no. think, I mean, if you think mm-hmm. everything in the world, new creation and everything that people do, they have to think it first. Absolutely. It comes in the head. Absolutely. So Absolutely. So this is the reason that they use the word Bereshit, you see. But then the rabbis went further and they said, but how, you know, where does thinking begin? When do we start using the brain and saying, I'm going to look, I'm going to think of a house. You see, when does the, when does, when does beginning begin? You see, and here what the word signifies is that the beginning is the work of God. And in a previous uh, visit that I had, we spoke about the uh, numerology of the Hebrew letters, remember? And we spoke about the name of God. And we said that God's name, as is written in the book of Exodus, where Moses came and saw him in the burning bush, you know, and God said, my name is I shall be Eheyeh. Mm-hmm. And the name in the Hebrew, Eheyeh, uh, has a sum of 21. Aleph, He, Yud, He is 1, 5, 10, 5. It's 21. Mm-hmm. And 2 plus 1 is 3. And 3 is a number that is given as the root number Mm -hmm. of creation and of everything else, Mm -hmm. you see. And God is that God, and he also is the God of the future. So this is is why, when you say the three... So, what we say here Mm -hmm. is that the first three letters of Bereshit Mm -hmm. is the beginning of creation. And how do we know that it's the first three letters? Because the first three letters of Bereshit is Bet, Mm -hmm. uh, Resh, and Aleph. And Bet, Resh, and Aleph is the second word. Mm -hmm. It comes again after Bereshit. The second word is Bara. Bara. You see? And Bara means created. So the word Bereshit, which means first, has the first three letters, you see, is create. Mm -hmm. And three letters is for the God. one God whose uh, numerical recognition is with the number three, mm-hmm. you see? Mm-hmm. And so here we have God making ha- a plan mm-hmm. for creation mm-hmm. with the word Bereshit, you see? And then they said, now, is Bereshit really in the beginning? Mm-hmm. You see? And they said, why would, want, why would God want creation? What is the purpose of creation? Why does God create? I mean, he could have done something else. He could have played with different worlds uh, or, or, or something as whatever. You know, God is God. He can do all kinds of things. Why did he choose to create altogether? And so they say that the word Bereshit, you see, the prefix bet, the first letter, doesn't have to be in the, mm-hmm. because bet in Hebrew, and we have references in the Torah for that, mm-hmm. can also mean for. Okay. You see? So we know that in that the bet, the mm-hmm. prefix bet, mm-hmm. is used as the word as the prefix for in, mm-hmm. like for example, beyom uh, shishi on the on the sixth day. You see, mm-hmm. so it's. It's in or on, you know, yeah. in the sixth day, on the sixth day, right? Um, but so it's like for the know, beginning. But, but it can also be for, for example, when uh, in the book of Genesis, in the story of Jacob, Jacob came down, went up rather to uh, Ur of, uh, Aram, Nahara, uh, Aram, Aram, you know, mm-hmm. and he stayed with his uncle Laban. Mm-hmm. And he fell in love with Rachel. Rachel. And so when, uh, when Laban said to him, well, you know, you can't work for me for nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, how can I recompense you for your troubles? Mm-hmm. Uh, Yaakov, Jacob, said, 
I will work for seven years. Berachel bitcha haktana for Rachel, your little daughter, your younger daughter. You see, so Berachel doesn't mean in Rachel. It means for Rachel. And so the sages said, don't say in the beginning God created the world, but rather for a beginning. And so they question for the beginning of what? You see, because it's for the beginning of, the ending, the, pre- the how, suffix. Yes, yeah, so for see. how long, how did they, is it like they, they teach together, the inquiry? Yes, of they, course, yeah. of course. You see, in, 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 in studying Torah and in studying Judaism, mm-hmm. the way to do it is the way that the two of us are doing it right here. You see, it's called Chavruta. Mm-hmm. Chavruta means friendship. Mm-hmm. You see, so you get two students in friendship together, and they challenge one another, you see, and they, and they, and they bring up things and say, did you ever think that maybe it's this way? Did you ever think of that kind of a thought, you see? And so by, by challenging one another and by stretching the imagination mm-hmm. one of the other, they succeed in expanding, mm-hmm. expanding their own understanding, expanding in the other one's knowledge, very you good, see? very good, because I was, it's very interesting, because I was speaking also with my son yesterday, and he was, saying, he was saying certain things, and I said, no, it's important to be together, because there is interaction, and everybody brings something to, you know, the teaching, and so this is just wonderful. Eliezer, the time is so short, I can understand why we need to have eternity. <laughs> this is the first, the first word of the Torah, of yes. the Bible. It's just, uh, you know, of the Hebrew scriptures. So, you see, it's so good to be together and be able to interact. We are happy to interact also with you. Go in at, um, to our website and tell us what you think about the program. We are very happy we are here to help each other to learn more about the instruction of the Lord in the Hebrew language. And don't forget, we are living in the last days. You've been watching In the Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you in two weeks, same time, same station, for the next program from In the Last Days. Ki mitzion tetzet Torah udvar Hashem mi Yerushalayim. For out of Zion shall come forth the teaching, not the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Again, the word of the law of, of the Lord is not law. In the same way that you might say that uh, a child whose father gives him some instruction, he's not setting down a law, but he's trying to teach him how to live a good life and how he's going to be rewarded for his good deeds. Very good, very and that's the whole concept relative to Torah. Very good. So you see, don't be afraid of the name Torah. We, I don't know why. In the Christian world, a lot of people are afraid. Saying we go under the law. No, it's the instruction of the Lord. So that's it's very correct. important. That's correct. Yeah. And it's really, uh, it's a compliment Mm-hmm. to the New Testament. Mm-hmm. It's not a competition mm-hmm. with the New Testament, okay. but rather a complement to the New Testament. And uh, anybody who says that uh, the Old Testament, you know, of course, for Jews, it's not the Old Testament. Yeah, sure. uh, it's the only yeah. uh, teaching, mm-hmm. you see. But uh, from point of view of Christianity, the Old Testament is law and the New Testament is love. Well, that's not true. true. It's not true. I agree, because because I started to read it and uh, I can see it's not true. Where where it talks Mm -hmm. about the foundation of the faith in Judaism, Mm -hmm. 
you know, we come to the call words of the Jewish people from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And Jesus the Jew in the New Testament language again is to introduce the people again to the Hebrew language and you can find that on uh, our website which is www.inthelastdays.com and these two books you can find them on Amazon. Try again because I know this one Eliezer was telling me it's harder to find but yesterday I was going again onto the Amazon uh, website and I could see it was written there so you can grab a book is an amazing book because the two, the fulfillment of prophecy, it gives the story, the inside story of the family. And the other one is more all the story also about Israel. So this is wonderful. And also, so today we are starting, you see, I start to read my Bible in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. So it's Hebrew there and English there. So slowly, slowly. And this is the book of Genesis. And we are going to speak about that. So again, yes. people, if you can, if you start to learn Hebrew, just learn also with the Torah, with the Hebrew scriptures, because it really gives you more understanding and it goes close to your faith, isn't it? It's so rich. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, one of the first things that uh, I would like to mention, we didn't even talk about that ahead of time, but you know, very often when people speak about Torah, they say, it's the Torah, that is to say the law. Mm -hmm. You see, and Torah is not law. Torah is instruction. instruction or teaching, mm -hmm. and it comes from the root of the word more, which means teacher, and lehorot, which is the infinitive form that says mm -hmm. to teach. So to teach is lehorot, and Torah is what you are learning. So you it's, see, our it's book the teaching. Yes, it's our you book see? of teaching. And you know, one of the uh, very famous uh, statement of the prophet is, when he was asked, what is the first teaching? Not what is the first commandment. Mm -hmm. You see? Very what is the first teaching? He said very naturally, very, you know... Straight out of his heart. Automatically <laughs> yeah, yeah, out yeah. of his heart, yeah. exactly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He said, of course, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You see? And then, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Mm -hmm. You see? And so, this is... Without the love, there is nothing, you know, including in the Hebrew scriptures. You see. So, what we want to do is to understand mm -hmm. a little bit more about the Hebrew scriptures. The Hebrew scriptures are almost written in code mm -hmm. because in the days when they were transcribed, writing was a very difficult chore. People wrote, and they wrote with pen, you know, with a quill, but it was difficult because it was tedious, and uh, you had expensive. to prepare. Expensive also? Look, it was not a mercantile time, so expensive meant nothing. Okay, yeah. Nobody had money, you see. And what is, what is the meaning of expensive? If you didn't have food, you starved. So to get food was the important thing, you know. But you couldn't put a value to it at all. There was no value to it, you see. So, you know, this is, when you speak about expensive, really you're talking about modern times already. Mm -hmm. uh, in antiquity, uh, wealth was measured by how many working hands you could put into the field. Mm -hmm. How much wheat and barley and grain and uh, 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 olives and pomegranates and grapes, mm -hmm. how much of that you could bring mm -hmm. and how much of that you could preserve. Because if you had all the apples in the world, you would still starve once the apples started to rot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see? So you had to make sure that you had to preserve the, them. The, a way to preserve them, and you had a way to uh, maintain yourself by having a variety of fruits and vegetables and grain that you could use all year long. And that was something very important for the people back then. So, uh, going back to the, uh, the Hebrew scriptures, mm -hmm. 
uh, they had to prepare. The first books were not written on uh, paper. Mm -hmm. uh, they were written on parchment, on skin, you see. And uh, uh, when they were written on skin, you had to prepare the skin ahead of time mm -hmm. so that it will be preserved for a while, like a couple of hundred years or so. <laughs> so that took a, a long time to prepare and to learn how to prepare it. Mm -hmm. And then writing, you know, not everybody knew how to write. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, most people learn how to read, but not necessarily to write. Right, right. So uh, that was there, and uh, once you wrote, you wrote in code. For example, uh, Hebrew writing mm -hmm. is all consonants. There are no vowels. Mm -hmm. So you write uh, BK, mm -hmm. and BK can be uh, buck, and it could be back, and it could be book. In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Shalom, dear friends. Welcome to In the Last Days program. Today we, w we have again Eliezer Ben Yehuda, which is wonderful. We've done already some Hebrew um, teaching with him, and we know how it is important to go into the Torah, into the Word of God in Hebrew. So welcome again. Thank you. To it's you. a pleasure to be Hello. with you. It's wonderful. I want to remind you that Eliezer Ben Yehuda is the grandson of the Eliezer Ben Yehuda, and there is books written about his granddad. This book is the tongue of the prophet and is the story of Israel and of Eliezer Ben Yehuda. And you can't put this book down. There is like up and down, he almost died, love stories in the middle, and the story of the revival of the Hebrew language. There is also this book, and this was written by Eliezer Ben Yehuda, the grandson of the Eliezer Ben Yehuda, and it's called Fulfillment of Prophecy and how his granddad was part of, of this fulfillment of prophecy that the Hebrew language was used again, not just to be, pr uh, to be uh, pray like they used it for prayers, they always, they always prayed in Hebrew. So they didn't lose really the language, but they weren't speaking it on the street anymore. And he was the first one in on the street of Jerusalem of speaking Hebrew, and this is just wonderful to know that. And I wrote also a book which is called The Beauty of the Hebrew.